Great morning to you. Great morning to each of you. Uh, how is everyone doing this morning? Pastor Lisa here, uh, senior pastor of the St. Matthew's Baptist Church of Harlem, and uh, I am excited to be with you this morning. As always, how are you guys doing? How is everyone doing? How are you guys doing? Um, we're here in New York City. I am in New York City today, Queens. Uh, have a long day ahead of me. Um, but I am grateful to God. And so um, I just come on, uh, what is it, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays to share a brief mid-morning motivation with you. So I pray each of you are doing well on this wonderful Wednesday morning, Wednesday morning. So um, I am looking, this morning we're going to be looking at Isaiah. We've been continuing with Isaiah, so we're going to continue doing that today with uh, Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah. So um, I am looking today at um, Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verse 2, verse 2 on the 43rd chapter. Uh, is anyone out there? I'm looking to see, oh, hey there, how you going? How are you doing? <laughs> Joseph Glover, there you are. There you are. There you are. And Vanessa Wilson, there you are. Okay. I thought I was alone this morning. I, I'm like saying, where is everybody? <laughs> Um, listen, guys, thank you so much, Joseph Glover. Thank you. Thank you. Um, listen, guys, I do need for you to share. So please share this with people. Uh, we are looking uh, at the 43rd chapter of Isaiah these couple of days. So please share with someone, share with someone. Uh, so again, for those of you that are just tuning in that do not know, Again, like I said, Pastor Lisa Jenkins, Senior Pastor of the St. Matthew's Baptist Church of Harlem, and I am excited because I'm going to be celebrating my fifth anniversary, fifth anniversary this coming Saturday and Sunday. And there's a link uh, in the text area if you wish to get tickets for Saturday. And Sunday is, of course, worship service in the morning. Reverend Dr. Lester Taylor from the Community Baptist Church of Englewood, New Jersey, is the morning preacher. And then that afternoon uh, at 3.30, my pastor from the Calvary Baptist Church in Jamaica, New York, is going to be the preacher along with uh, my Calvary Baptist Church family is going to be with us at 43 McCombs Place in Harlem. That's 43 Reverend, Do Reverend Dr. John J. Sass Place in Harlem, about a 10-minute walk across the McCombs Dam Bridge if you are coming from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. We are right there. We are right there. Uh, I see Charlie Patterson. God bless you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, here in Queens, it's 48 degrees, a little chilly, uh, but we're expecting a high of 57 degrees today uh, and a low of 43, okay? Um, and so uh, before we go into this, I just wanted to really share with you uh, a little emphasis each morning. I want to try to share with you something that has piqued my interest, uh, and then we're going to move into the word of the Lord. And this morning, um, I, what piqued my interest was Megan Kelly. I don't know if any of you have heard about about Megan Kelly. She went on, uh, she has her own show, Megan Kelly, uh, NBC Megan Kelly Today. And she had originally said that uh, going in blackface was okay, that it is okay for white people to uh, dress up for Halloween in blackface. And of course, she received a storm uh, of, of, of backlash for that statement, and then she apologized. And so, you know, I am so tired of people apologizing after they receive a storm of backlash, realizing that it's going to affect their ratings, that it's going to affect their celebrity, it's going to affect who they are in the media. Uh, it's, it's, and she said it was okay when she was growing up to, uh, to be in blackface, but she realizes that it's not now, you know, it's never been okay to appear in blackface. It's never, it was never okay for white people to walk around in blackface, whether it's Halloween whether it's for some prank, wh whatever the situation is. And so, sisters and brothers, we need to be aware of the things that are happening, the things that people are saying. Megyn Kelly is the same woman 
who said that Santa Claus is white. Now, you guys might say Santa Claus is not real. That's not a big deal. But let me tell you, imagery is everything. Imagery is everything. And for what, with what our young people are internalizing when they grow up, the images that are positive and those that are negative, it is extremely important that we make sure that our young people have the appropriate understanding of imagery. And so we have to be careful of who we are supporting. Be careful of who we are supporting. So be prayerful about that, my sisters and brothers. So today, okay, Megan Kelly, all right, who the other day said that blackface was okay, going around for Halloween and blackface was okay, has since apologized. And you know me, miss me with these apologies, people. Miss me with these apologies, okay? Now, let's move on, okay? Share, share this with somebody. Share, share, share. Okay. Also, those of you who wish to donate, you have a spirit of generosity. The St. Matthew's Baptist Church. Okay. That is who you would be donating to. Not to myself, not to LDJ Ministries, my own 501c3, uh, but you would be donating to the St. Matthew's Baptist Church. So please share with someone. Please donate if if you if 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 the spirit of uh, if the spirit so moves you, which I pray that it will, so that people in the Harlem community, people in the South Bronx community, and all over can benefit from your generosity. Okay, share, share with somebody. God bless you. Share this with someone. Father, we thank you and bless you for what you're doing. Uh, Lord God, even though there is racism that abounds, even though, Lord God, there is prejudice and discrimination, you do not discriminate. You, Lord God, continue to uh, shine your favor upon us no matter who. You are no respecter of person. And so we thank you for your goodness and your, your mercy. Lord God, as we go into this lesson, I thank you that you are going to uh, pour out understanding and knowledge upon your people, that, Lord God, it shall be rooted in our hearts, Lord, that it might grow, and that the fruit, Lord God, might be beneficial for those who shall eat of it. Lord, I bless you for every person, not only that's logging on, but for those that shall be affected by the people who are hearing this word this morning. I bless you and I give you glory. In your son Jesus' name, I say amen. We say amen and amen. Listen, God bless you guys. Share, 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 share. Listen, uh, the word for today, you know, we've been working and walking through Isaiah 43, Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. We've been working through this. And we said the other day that Isaiah, uh, had given, uh, Isaiah had given Israel a tongue lashing in the 42nd chapter of Isaiah. And now he is telling the people, uh, it's a new day. It is a new day. It's a new day. And so we want you to know that he said, uh, not only, uh, is the Lord connected to you, not only are you, uh, you are connected to God because he created you and because God formed you. He says, fear not because he's redeemed you, even though you were placed in some costly situations, God has redeemed you and he has summoned you. He has called you out of those situations. Why? Because you belong to the Lord. And now here we are in verse two, severe weather alert. Hold on to the boat, hold on to the railing, batten down the hatches, severe weather alert is coming. The Bible says in Isaiah 43, chapter 2, I'm looking at the English Standard Version, it says, when you pass through the waters, not if, it says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flames shall not consume you. Severe weather alert, it is coming, God. Guys, listen, you know, uh, 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 the conservatives say that there is no such thing as global warming. We are in a season already of global warming. Global warming is causing hurricanes. Global warming is calling the, 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 the rivers to rise. Global warming is causing the droughts and the brush fires that are happening in California and other parts of our country and across the world. So when the Bible talks about some things that are happening, they're talking about some things that are literally going to happen, but also figuratively in our lives. And so, so, so the prophet says, uh, uh, he says, he says, uh, he's telling us what God is saying. He's saying that God is saying, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. 
Okay, there are going to be some waters that you're going to pass through. There are going to be some flood situations that you're going to have to deal with. And 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 God is saying it's not an if, but it's with us. It's a when because sooner or later there are going to be some rough waters and there are going to be some raging rivers. If it's not happening now, it's going to happen tomorrow. Sooner or later, you're going to have some trials and you're going to have some tribulations. Sooner or later, chaos is going to creep into your corner calamity is going to knock at your doorstep. It's going to knock on your door sooner or later. And I want to tell you, my sisters and brothers, how you respond, how you respond to these, to these, these raging rivers, okay, is going to determine if you are going to be overwhelmed by flash floods or if you are going to be able to pass through, amen, the raging rivers. Your attitude is going to determine your outcome. Your attitude is going to determine your outcome. And what you need, my sisters and brothers, is a pass-through attitude. When you're dealing with the raging rivers, when you're dealing with the storms of life, when you're dealing with the fires that are going to try to consume you, you've got to have a pass-through attitude. What is a pass-through attitude? A pass-through attitude says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's a pass-through attitude. A pass-through attitude says that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I am not going to fear any evil. That is a pass-through attitude. A pass-through attitude says that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We're talking about a pass-through attitude. I need y'all to to share this with someone because somebody needs a pass-through attitude regardless of whatever it is that they're going through. A pass-through attitude, what are we talking about? Pass-through attitude is what got our people through centuries and centuries of oppression. A pass-through attitude is what got African Americans through repression, subjugation, and, and, and domination. What I'm talking about, pass-through attitudes, okay? Uh, our ancestors had to have it. They couldn't read the Bible. They, 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 couldn't, uh, they couldn't understand the words that they were looking at, but they knew the stories. They knew the stories of where Moses, amen, went and, 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 and he told Pharaoh to let my people go because they knew that there was a history of an oppressed people whose story was in the Bible and they were able to remember that it was God that told Moses, I've seen uh, the afflictions. I've heard my people and because I've seen and hurt my people, I'm going to be able to get in their situation and I'm going to be able to release them from bondage. Even though there's a severe weather alert, God is saying I'm able to provide a shelter over you. African Americans, our ancestors remembered the Hebrew children, remembered how they escaped out of Egypt, remembered how they passed through the Red Sea and how they were not overwhelmed by the river, how they were not overwhelmed by the waters. Why? because they knew that God was with them. They had a pass-through attitude, even though there was a severe weather alert. And so how could they relate to the, the, the Hebrew children? They realized, amen, that that was an oppressive situation back then. And so when our ancestors had to pick cotton, when our ancestors picked tobacco and picked rice and sugar in the fields all day long, they knew that sooner or later there was going to be a God that said, I have seen the afflictions of my people. I've heard their cry and I'm going to release them from their bondage. And we knew sooner or later that our people were going to steal away in the darkness. They were going to go up to the north. They were going to look to that star that was going to be their guide. And they were going to realize that there is freedom. And sisters and brothers, I'm talking collectively, but I'm talking personally as well. Because we are a collective people. We are a village, but we can be blessed both collectively and individually. I want to let you know right now, my sisters and brothers, that yes, a severe storm alert is coming. It is going to come. But God, because he loves you, because he is connected to you, because he says you are mine, he is going to deliver you out of that situation. God says when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. 
You will not be consumed, okay? You will not be consumed. I need y'all to share this with someone. You will not be consumed. When you are consumed by something, you are no longer what you were, but you take on the attributes of what has consumed you, okay? So that means if you let small-minded people consume you, you become small-minded as well. If you let gossip consume you, then you are consumed by gossip and and how can you move into what God is calling you to move into? If you are letting uh, 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 hot situations consume you, how can you keep your cool when God is calling you to a brand new level? We have always been a people who have had to go through some stuff. We've always been a people who have had to go through the fire, who have had to go through the raging rivers. But just like I said, our ancestors always had the stories. I need us to continue to share the stories, share the stories, share the stories so that we can understand that God has not called us to stand, okay, and to be overwhelmed by the floods, to stand and to be overwhelmed by the situations. But God has called us out of some things. And so, yes, there are going to be some floods. Yes, there are going to be some brush fires. Yes, there are going to be some rivers. But I come to tell you that the storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The hymn writer said, courage, oh my soul. Let us journey on. Though the night is dark, it won't be very long. Thanks be to God, the morning light appears and the storm is passing over. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's the old folk to say hallelujah, hallelujah. Sisters and brothers, that is my word for you today. Severe weather alert. Don't worry. God is in control. He did it for our ancestors. He will do it for us today. He did it for them. He will do it for you. Be encouraged. Listen, I need you to share this with someone. It's not too late, okay, so that they can see the replay. And again, if you are so moved, please donate to the St. Matthew's Baptist Church of Harlem. We are doing a great work in the Harlem community and in the South Bronx community as well. We have on our prayer list today, our prayer list today is uh, uh, Brother James Eady Jr. Uh, some of us know Brother Glover. Uh, you know, uh, young, uh, we call him Jam from back in the day. Um, James Eady is in the hospital, a young man. He's not even 30 years old, uh, if, I be if I believe correctly. My, my, I'm getting up in age, so he might be 30. <laughs> but um, his father passed. Uh, really, my brother in Christ and my brother, I've known him since, uh, I would say, the 7th or 8th grade, his father. And he passed a couple of years ago. Go. So please keep Sister Cecilia Edie in prayer. Her son, James Jr., is in the hospital. We are keeping in prayer Brother Rodney Warner, uh, a member of St. Matthew's who just had um just had surgery on Monday. He's recuperating. We are keeping, he's in his in his 20s. Okay, thank you, um, Brother Glover. Thank you. He's in his 20s. Good. Okay, so, um, yeah, so keep keep James Edie Jr. in prayer. We're keeping the boy and Sass family in prayer as they continue to mourn the past. Of, uh, of Sister Jeanette uh, Boy, Reginald Threat, who had a, uh, a seizure or, or, or a stroke, actually, the other day. He's in therapy. And I want us to keep a sister in prayer. I don't know her, but I went on one of our groups. Uh, I've got Harlem in my blood. It's a group for those who live in Harlem, who work in Harlem, who are from Harlem. And uh, her her tag her name on Facebook is Right Sister. I'm not sure if that's her real name. I don't think so. But she posted that she is in an abusive relationship. She's been married for seven months, just seven months. And she said that when her husband uh, drinks, that he abuses her. And she was asking what to do. I want us to pray for this sister, but I also want us to pray for the individuals and how people will respond to her. We cannot be so condemning. So many people says, one, don't put your stuff on Facebook. So many people said you should have known what he was before you married him. So many people were condemning her. Let me tell you something. We perhaps we should not, perhaps we should not put certain things on Facebook. But when some people do, it is a cry for help. The sister is going through some emotional situation. She's going through a mental situation. 
She is, she is crying out for help. And we have to be the village that knows how to respond to people when they are crying out for help, whether it is on, excuse me, whether it is on Facebook, whether it is on Twitter, whatever it is, we need to not condemn and judge people. So, so let's pray for those who are even crying out for help on Facebook. Don't say, oh, don't put your business on Facebook. It's already been done. The person has already put it out there. Our job is to seek wise counsel and to be prayerful. And if you are not a social worker, if you are not a psychiatrist, if you are not a trained therapist, if you are not a pastor who has at least taken a couple of courses in, in how to be compassionate, please just tell the person that you are going to encourage them to do the right thing and you're going to pray for them. Okay? Let us look to the Lord. Father, we thank you and bless you that you are an unstoppable God whose uh, blessings are unstoppable. We thank you, Lord God, that you have given us this worth that even when the storms come, even when there is a severe weather alert, that you are still, Lord God, doing great and wonderful things, that we shall not be overwhelmed by flash floods, that, Lord God, we shall not be consumed by the fires, but, Lord God, you shall cover us and protect us on every end. Lord God, we stand and intercede for those who are in need of healing, right now. We stand and intercede for those who are going into the hospital, who are going into surgery right now. We stand and intercede, especially for those who are dealing with domestic violence. Lord God, you know the sister who posted on Facebook in that group. You know what she's going through, Lord God. Newly married, but an abusive husband, Lord. We don't need people to condemn her. We don't need people to mock her. We don't need people to talk about why she did or did not. We need people who are going to pray we need people who have wise counsel. We need trained individuals, Lord God, who are able to help this sister do the right thing. And so we stand and intercede right now, Lord God, knowing that not only shall no weapon formed against us shall prosper, but we intercede for her right now, Lord God. I pray that she knows the goodness, Lord God, of you and your son, Jesus. I pray that she knows the power, Lord God, that is in you and your son, Jesus. I pray that every person, female or male, that is in an abusive relationship that you release them right now in the name of Jesus. I pray strength Lord God. I pray Lord God that they remain, that they are mighty Lord God because you are mighty. I pray Lord God that they have peace of mind, the peace that passes all understanding in the name of Jesus. I pray that they shall not fear Lord God because you have not given us a spirit of fear. I pray Lord God right now that every person other than the sound of my voice that's in a relationship that's abusive, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whether it's psychological, whether it's verbal, Lord God, whatever it is that turns them upside down and prevents them from operating in the spirit of God, Lord God, I intercede right now and we all collectively pray that you shall break those bondages, that you shall destroy those yokes. I thank you, Lord God, that you are breaking down yokes, Lord God, all over this country. Lord God, we intercede right now on what is happening in the capital of this country. We intercede right now, Lord God. God, that you shall, Lord God, have your way, Lord God, with the president of these United States, Lord God. I ask, Lord God, that you do what is necessary so that justice, Lord God, might reign, so that righteousness, Lord God, might reign. I ask, Lord God, that you intercede, Lord God, that laws shall be passed, that re legislation, Lord God, shall be passed, that people, Lord God, who are marginalized shall be brought to the center. Lord God, I know you stand on the side of those who are marginalized. You stand on the side of those who are poor. You stand on the side of those, Lord God, who are disenfranchised. So we stand also, Lord God, with those who are disenfranchised. We stand, Lord God, with those who are poor. We stand, Lord God, with those who are immigrants. In the name of Jesus, we stand, Lord God, with those all over this country and all over this world. Right now, Lord God, how many days, Lord God? Only a few days to election day. Lord God, we know that you are a God that is involved in every situation, even politics, Lord God. God, because it affects your people and whatever affects your people, we know that you are concerned with it. So Lord God, right now I ask that you give those who are concerned about your people, give them a way, Lord God, to get to the voting booth. Lord God, we stand and stamp out anything that would prevent well-meaning people, Lord God, from getting to the voting booths. We stand right now and intercede on behalf of those who are, who are, who are wanting to, to push the lever, who are wanting to write the X for those 
Lord God, who are going to make change for your people for the better. And Lord God, I thank you that we have a voice. I thank you, Lord God, that we are able to seek you. I thank you, Lord God, that we are able to go before you, Lord God. I thank you that you have sent your son, Lord God, to be among us. And I bless you that you are a God that cares about the least of these. Give us the reminder and give us the strength that we too shall care about the least of these. And when we do this, Lord God, we know that we're going to get individual blessings as well as collective blessings. We don't do it for the blessings, Lord God, but we know that you've taken care of us before. You shall continue to take care of us again. Remind us, Lord God, that we don't belong to ourselves, but we belong to one another and we belong to you. This is our prayer as we go about our day. In Jesus' name, we say amen and we say amen. We say amen. God bless each and every one of you. Share with somebody. And if you are so moved, again, please donate to the St. Matthew's Baptist Church. You can find me at www.lisadjenkins.org. In the meantime, I love each of you guys so very much. Continue to have an unstoppable day in Christ Jesus. God bless you.